little radical, but guys, in the United States, we've been doing something like this for 30 years with the methadone maintenance program. And methadone is very good for some people, but for a lot of people, it's not very good. It's a much more addictive drug than heroin. If you go on it, you're probably going to be on it for life. It's a much stronger drug. You, know, you don't go cold turkey on it, you'll probably die. And there are other countries that treat heroin users much better by giving them, effectively, free government heroin. started in Switzerland 15 years ago, and then it was picked up by the Netherlands five years later because it works so well in Switzerland. And Germany started a similar project uh, uh, where they used prescription heroin two years ago. And in February of this year, Denmark started a situation like they have in Switzerland. Let's talk about Switzerland, because it's been around the longest. Fifteen years ago, the Swiss people said, we're tired of arresting our children for making the mistake of using heroin. We're going to treat this as a health problem, and we're going to try to help those young people. So they set up 23 clinics around the country where if you're a heroin user, you can actually come in and uh, use, you can choose substitute drugs or you could use, choose to use heroin. And if you chose the heroin, you could come in up to three times a day and actually inject that drug under medical conditions, using clean needles, there's social workers, job specialists, educators there to try to wean them off the drugs. And about 20% of those folks quit using any drug. You know, we're happy in the United States if we get 3 to 5% out of our rehabs. <clears throat> the reason they say it's so high is because they no longer treat these people as a criminal. They're treated as someone with a health problem. So once they come in and clean up, they can go back without the stigma attached. They can find jobs. They can get their life back. You can't do that in the United States. Some other wonderful things that have happened as a result of this. Not a single overdose death there in 15 years. Think of all the lives that have been saved. AIDS and hepatitis in Switzerland used to be one of the highest countries in, the, in Europe because they had the policy they had before. This policy was Needle Park. That's the one all the drug warriors will talk to you about, which was a disaster. They set aside parks and they said, uh, you drug users go in there, don't bother us, we won't bother you, and AIDS and hepatitis went right through the ceiling. But for the last 15 years, because of this project, it has dropped the rate of AIDS and hepatitis. Switzerland has dropped it to the lowest per capita rate of any country in Europe. And because this, the drugs are distributed on a sliding scale, so most of the people have to pay for it, but if you don't have any money, the drugs are free. And because of that, crime was cut by 60%. People don't have to break into your house and steal your television set to pay for the drugs. They don't have to prostitute themselves to pay for the drugs. And because the drugs are effectively free, there's no dopers on the streets where those projects were selling drugs. Because you can't be free, what fool would buy from it? Right? And if the drug dealers aren't, the, aren't on the streets, they're not killing each other, cops or kids. Which means all that violence is gone. And maybe even more important than any of that is the, there was a study, a 10-year study done on this by the very prestigious medical journal The Lancet out of Britain that showed that over that 10-year period there has been an 82% decline in new heroin users in Zurich. 82% less. Imagine that. Almost every other country in the world has registered more heroin users than we projected 10 years ago. Here it's an 82% decline. So the Swiss people have figured out a way to reduce death, disease, crime, and addiction, all four of the things that lead us after. And this is the closest policy we have in the United States to legalization. No, go ahead. Yes. No, I think we have to uh, relatively, or very soon, come to an end so people can question you. Also. Yes, I'm, I'm just about to the end. Very good. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you what happens now when, with that money. Well, we would redirect that money to programs that give people hope for the future. All the money we're saving, <clears throat> $76 billion a year. <clears throat> instead, of, instead of creating 
spending $70 billion next year in my country to create harsher mandatory minimum sentences. Imagine what would happen if we legalized drugs today and next year we spent that $70 billion, say, on mandatory minimum education for everyone. How about mandatory minimum health care for people? I know you, you folks have stuff like that. We don't have it in the United States. How about talking about some form of a very basic housing that everybody deserves to get rid of our homeless on the streets? You know, if we, if we spend that money on job training, employment, livable wages, can you imagine how many fewer drug users we'd have out there? And isn't that what the whole war on drugs was about? Less need to use drugs means less drug addicts. And we still have money left to create programs that give, tell the, the truth about what drug use is and, and what drugs are like. We have a program in the United States called the D.A.R.E. program that every student has to go through. And it is, uh, there's been about 100 studies that say it's totally worthless. If anything, it may cause more people to use drugs than, than less. And yet, to get it out of our schools, you practically have to blast. And the reason for that, again, is money. $1.3 billion changes hands every year as a, a result of this deal of drug policy. Most of it's going into the pockets of police, by the way. But there are education programs out there that really work. The one I would suggest to you is the one on the only drug that we have had any success in 100 years of reducing its, the use of. And it happens to be the worst drug known to humans. You know which one that is, right? Alcohol. Alcohol is the second worst. Alcohol. It's cigarettes. Nicotine is the most addictive drug No, far more addictive than heroin. <clears throat> By 1985 in my country, 42% of the population smoked cigarettes. <clears throat> we didn't start a war on that, although it was far and away the worst killer. It kills still today. Uh, we have 430,000 people die every year from ingesting those cigarettes. And 85,000 a year die from ingesting alcohol, by the way. It eats holes in your liver, it eats holes in your brain. It, it is a poison. The people who die from the combination of all the illegal drugs in the United States from ingesting them is about 12,000 a year. But we started a war on that. And of course, for ingesting marijuana, not one death in all of recorded history. But it's a class one drug in my we started a very strong educational program on cigarettes, and then we pretty much regulated them out of existence. And we believe in regulation, at least. In my country, in Massachusetts, you can smoke at home, you can smoke in your car, but you can't smoke in any public place. You can't even smoke in a bar. So my wife is a, a, a professional jazz musician now, and... and when she plays in a bar, she's so happy that she doesn't have to deal with that smoke. And I go down to listen to jazz, and I, as I'm going into the bar, I see people standing out and still up to their knees trying to light a cigarette, you know, very quickly. That, that gives them a lot of incentive to quit. So in, in the last 30 years, we've cut the use of the most addictive drug known to humans in half. Actually, this is old. It's down to 17% now. And what I want to point out to you is, those of us that leave want to point out is, we didn't have to destroy one life for this wonderful success story. We didn't have to imprison one human being. So that's the program. And I'll just leave you with this. Maybe we should listen to some of the smarter people in the world, like Albert Einstein, who on Prohibition had this to say. He said, the prestige of the government has undoubtedly been lowered considerably by the prohibition law because nothing is more destructive of respect for the government and the law of the land than passing laws which cannot be enforced. It's an open secret that the dangerous increase of crime in this country, meaning the United States, is closely connected with this. Albert Einstein, 1921. Talking about our prohibition? No, talking about the prohibition that my grandmother and grandfather were 
very sensibly got rid of in 1933. And this is a picture of probably the people most responsible for ending that terrible law. It was taken one year before it fell in 1932, out in where I 